Utopia Farms today. Our girls just went out and we've got the generator going. It's a miserable day. We're going to put some bedding out for them. you got to remember there are pluses and minuses to every type of farming. Well, if you want good hay, you want it wet and cold. That's a nice group of lambs. you got to admit that. I mean, pretty consistent. Let's get started. So it's a really rainy, dismal day today. I often envy the people in the UK and stuff for being able to have their sheep running around on pasture and stuff at this time of year. But right now I'm not in the least bit envious. I wouldn't want my sheep out here. It's nasty, nasty weather. And uh, all these guys, despite the fact it sounds like they're suffering, they're all dry, healthy, nobody's dying. <laughs> and it's a really good thing. Um, weird, weird day today. For some reason, the hydro's gone off, so Arnie's just hooking up the generator because obviously, one thing about indoors, if the hydro's off, there's no water for these animals, and this is a lot of animals to drink water. But uh, we do have a generator, so he's hooking that up. And then last night, Something happened at the neighbor's place. Arnie did a quick drive-by to see what was going on because there's lots of ambulances and fire trucks and stuff. And when he drove by, he couldn't see what was happening, but the field was lit up with a million uh, lights and stuff. And there are people lying in the field. So I don't know what happened over there. If they were, if it was a takedown and there were putting people down on the ground for drugs or people dead or we don't know but it's just weird anyway as you can tell these guys are hungry so I just fed my little triplets over here they're no problem I managed to fill up all the bottles before the water disappeared and I'm gonna feed the, the hungry mob here and obviously there's a, we need a bale of hay in here for all the ewes. So once Arnie's hooked up, we'll get moving here. So that's a 35 kilowatt generator. It will actually run the whole farm and run the house. And right now the hydro is going to be out for two and a half hours, I said, for uh, repairs. So the ferocious slake locust down the bottles. I swear they down them all in seconds. So, uh, and now they go straight from that to eating the creep feed and the other feed. But it's crazy in here at feeding time. And we've got a ewe down over here. She's been not feeling well for a few days so we've had her on antibiotics she's got twin lambs of course who of course are also not bottle babies um, we're gonna treat her again today but she doesn't look good we have no idea what's wrong with her none whatsoever she was fine up until recently her lambs are the biggest concern right now so we're gonna try our best to get her back up because her lambs stay right with her and uh, yeah, all we can do is keep treating her and hope for the best at this point. It's a miserable day. We're gonna put some bedding out for them. 
It's the straw bale, and this is the one that gets... The, the different balers pack the straw and cut it differently, so this is the Kubota baler, I think. And Arnie said it chopped the straw up way more. So for rolling out bales, it's the worst one. And the Ford one, the New Holland, it uh, chopped it a little better so he could roll it out backwards without it all coming out in one giant clump. Because when it comes out in a big clump like that... Honestly, I'll tell you right now. Japanese just stay out of the machine. So it, this one rolled out like you can see in a massive, massive clump. So it means you have to pitch it out with a fork, which is a pain. But it, the good thing about it is that straw is light and a lot of it, the sheep will just run out themselves. From what I've been seeing on the YouTube videos is this what is the kind of weather that the UK, Scotland, Ireland, all those guys have been seeing all the time and they're lambing right now. Um, it's bad enough working in the coveralls in this weather, but I just can't imagine the sheep out in the fields right now. Um, there, you got to remember there are pluses and minuses to every type of farming. And everyone has to do what suits their farm, but you can't say one is perfect and the other is not because there's definitely no perfect. He's rolling in it. He thinks it's the best thing ever. Look at him trying to roll in it. It's not a rolling thing. Okay, Arnie's not happy about this, but he's made a lot of ha lambs really happy. They love it when you put the bedding out. Okay, I have to guard here so the sheep don't go out, but in the other pan, they're having lamb races right now. Still pouring like crazy out there, raining cats and dogs, like jolly old England. You guys look so nice. Hi, you're very handsome.
Hi there. You guys are going to have so much fun today on this miserable day. Hi, you guys. Hi. Who are you? You're so little. So these straw bales, these are the ones when um, baler broke down. We had to hire in somebody and the bales are really, really big and they're really chopped up. So Arnie's having a major struggle today, not only pushing them, but them falling to pieces. Because yeah, usually straw bales are light, but these ones are super heavy until they break up. Then they're okay. bottle holder so I just built the last piece of pipe I have left and it should be fine so it goes in the wall that way and the bottles just slip in there right down in there so I just made that and hopefully she'll be happy with that and we'll get it hooked up. So we, we uh, just put a bale of bedding in here. It's extremely uh, wet and cold outside since rain. But the curtains are down, getting lots of cold air to come in the barn. And uh, put a bale of bedding down, they're kind of wet in here. So, so I don't know if Lynn told you, uh, the other day we pulled about 32 lambs out of this group, the old ones. It was getting too crowded. So 32 lambs left. And I guess Lynn told me this morning there's about over 70 lambs still in here yet. Actually, we should have pulled that one out. I don't know why, why we haven't pulled that one there. Yeah, that's the one that's getting stuck in, uh, in the creep feeder. We'll probably get it out tomorrow morning. There's a big ram right there. I don't know why he's still in here. So, they're a little bit dry tonight. Had some nice dry bedding. And I think I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to bed up the Dorset group right now too. They're dirty. We haven't pulled none of the Dorset lambs out yet. Uh, we were going to pull some out this morning. But it's just raining so hard, uh, we just thought we'd uh, skip that for one day. And we'll probably work on that tomorrow. Some of these, uh, some of these dorses are quite large. Having a hard time getting through that, uh, that, uh, door there. So, we're going to get a bale of uh, bedding. Uh, drive it in here. And dump it over that wall. And bed that group up too. So, just gave these guys uh, a bale of bedding too. It was just actually an old bale, like I always say. It comes from the tree lines. So there's actually a lot of uh, 
leaves and stuff in it. Uh, so it's not really good hay at all. So, don't have a nice warm place to lay down tonight. And they'll be checking this out for a few hours. Hey buddies. So. so see if anybody's under that manger or not. Because I I did not take the manure out of this side yet. This side still has quite an opening, so they can actually crawl out. But where are you going buddy? Hopefully that's your mother. See, I don't like that ram. That ram is is looking for something he shouldn't be looking for. Yeah, I'm taking that 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 ram right there. Right there. It's a little too big. A little too big. Yeah, I'd be nervous about these guys. Uh, the dorsus are highly uh, fertile. Uh, the, these rams will be, will be breeding before you know it. We gotta pull some of these rams out of here. So, everybody has bedding. Like that 45 right there. I mean, I, I mean that. Some people wouldn't even call that a lamb, a lamb anymore. So. I'm going to get out of here. i got a few more barns to check. And they're all bedded up. So it's pouring rain today. And I don't know if you can see it. But it's actually just giving a little bit of a green tint in the field right now. So all the grass is uh, sprouting. And if in a while here, I'm going to go to the new seeding field that we see down with new grass seed. And I'm going to show you what uh, what I'm looking for in a, in a hay field, in a new seeding field, to make good hay. And I'll just give you my tip. It's only my tip. It's, I'm not I'm not preaching for anybody else. I want to see in April. This is the first week in April. April showers, May flowers. So in April, you want to see it wet and cold now i know if you talk to lynn lynn will say bring on the heat but if you want good hay you want it wet and cold and there's a reason for that in a few days i'll go to the new seeding field and i'll show you why you want it wet and cold now some people will say some people will say well if you bring the heat on the hay will grow faster but there's a theory behind this, and I'll point that out in a few days if I have a moment to go to the hayfield. And I'll tell you why I do not want heat right now. I want it to be wet and cold. Because my main source of feed for the sheep is good hay. The, the, the crops and the beans and the corn, there's always time for that. Don't worry about that. Just concentrate on the hay right now. Remember, wet and cold. So these are all the replacement lands. So I just rolled out some hay for them. And remember I told you a few minutes ago that uh, that we pulled out some rams? Well actually we pulled out a quite a bit of, quite a few rams we pulled out and some ewes. So the second and third one there is a ewe. Uh, there's three ewes right there and the reason why we pull these out it's hard to believe people are always trying to get their lambs in good shape to go to the market but these lambs are actually getting too fat and I don't want them fat because they don't make good breeding stock so we're going to be picking through these rams shortly to see which rams are staying and which are not going to stay and Again, this is not Lynn's opinion, but I'm thinking me and Lynn are, are most of them on the same page. The first thing we're looking for when we look for lambs, and we'll talk about this later on, is we're looking for uh, capacity. 
So if I have a real, real sharp looking lamb, really sharp looking, but doesn't have the capacity, I probably don't want it, I'm gonna call it. The first thing I'm looking for is capacity. So I want it to have an engine. I want it to have a good rib cage where it can eat a volume of food to produce good lambs. That's the first thing I'm looking for. Now, right now, we're actually not, I'm gonna pick for capacity. I'm not really concerned about the legs at this moment, but we are gonna choose for legs too. And the reason why we're not gonna choose for legs so much first capacity is because most of our sheep, I don't see any bad legs at all. So the bad leg thing, is not really on my first pick for lambs. But we will pick for the best legs, but I don't see a lot of bad legs here. And I'm gonna say right now, probably one of the best legged lambs right there is Gladiator's lamb. See, he is, uh, he is right perfect on those legs in the back. Yeah, that's a, that's a priceless ram. I hope that ram doesn't die on me. But they die. The, the best ones always die. But uh, we are going to be picking sheep shortly. And, we'll, and Lynn and I will be together at that. And we'll probably lock horns a little bit. Because, I mean, if you didn't lock horns, life's pretty boring. Uh, but uh, me and Lynn will eventually end up on the same page. It's just that Lynn's a little more stubborn than I am. So I'm a little more flexible. I'm just kidding. It's probably the other way around. But that's a U right there. So, see, I don't want the I don't want the U's to get any fatter. So I don't want really fat U's. Uh, that U's and that U's in a perfect score a score for, for body weight. And if I keep pouring the grain to it, it's going to even get heavier. I don't want that. So, and if you look at that U, see her natural stand. She stood in the manger right away. And look at those first two U's there. You couldn't get nicer legs than that. Right where they want them. So legs are not not our, our first priority. The first priority is to be body capacity. If they have that big rib cage to eat the volume of food, and we're looking for the perfect heads too. But when I talk about heads, I know I'm talking too much right now. But when I'm talking about heads, we've been picking for for suffix for the heads and dorsets for the correct head for years. I don't see any heads that I would say it's really ugly. Most of our sheep all have that nice, beautiful Suffolk head. And uh, I know I'm tooting my own horn right now, but I think we've come a long ways with, uh, with the lambs. But we'll talk about that later. And uh, the, these are the ones, like I was saying, these are the ones we just pulled out yesterday. And you can see they already forgot about the mothers. Uh, they're, they're, they're weaned off, they're well on their way. And I mean, I mean, if you look down there, that's a nice group of lambs. You gotta admit that. I mean, pretty consistent. Can't complain about those dorsets. Big 45 right there. Yeah, they're they done extremely well for us. And we we uh, we st we started off with uh, dorsets. We started off with dordos. They were um, they were an F1 um, Riedel dorset cross, which were honestly fantastic mothers. Um, always gave you twins and triplets. We rarely had a single, but I'm so happy we went to pure dorset. I am enjoying I'm enjoying this way more. Uh, the pure breed Dorset than uh, than uh, than ones we had before. 
I'm really glad we did that. I'm enjoying that a lot. And so the selfish aren't doing too much running because I don't know why. I'm just giving them a bale of hay right now, so. Yeah, I'm extremely happy with the, with the dorsets. And that's a nice dorset right there. Just a nice dorset, yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy with that a lot. Yeah, so this is why this is why I'm debating uh, to pull all these lambs off the mothers. I know we're me and Lynn are discussing that, but the reason why I think with with the mothers they have to compete for major space. And see, I I just rolled out some alfalfa hay right here, and look at this. Everyone come right in. Oh, good ram. I know I should quit saying that. Huh. Good 35. Good ram. Anyways, but you can see what's happening. I, so I can feed these way better separate away from the mothers now. I think we should pull all the lambs. Come on, buddies. These are the Suffolk lambs that we just weaned yesterday and as you can see they're pretty happy here and not missing their moms at all. done our meals lately so as we were dishing it out Arnie reminded me that we should tell you what's for dinner as he pours his gravy over top so today's dinner is pork tenderloin with gravy roast potatoes roast peppers squash and beetroot having supper with the most beautiful woman in the world. Arnie, you should hear what he says when uh, he's not on camera. <laughs> and Just getting a few brownie points and then I'm not stupid. Let me, okay. Let me, let me do the shut off thing. Okay, go ahead. And see you later. I always wanted to do that. Everybody else I, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> Bye for now.